In this video I want to introduce the concepts of classes and objects. But before we do that, just a reminder, in first semester we spoke about data types and then you declared variables which were of those data types. So you would have a data type double and the variable would be amount. The important thing about a variable in this case was that the variable could only contain obviously one value. We took this a bit further late in the semester where we introduced arrays and in this case array list can keep 10 values but all 10 values must be integers. Okay, but let's look at this scenario. We want to write a program which keeps data for students. And for each student, we want to keep the surname, the name, the student number, and the age. Now, from first semester knowledge, you would have to declare four variables. Surname, name, student number, and age. That's easy enough. The problem comes in, what happens if you now want to keep information on, say, a hundred students? How would you do that? And we did introduce that in the first semester where you would have to have four separate arrays. The one keeping the surnames, the second one the names, the third one the student numbers, and the fourth one the ages. Obviously, this is a very complex way of doing it. Now, as I said previously, a class is something like a data type. So you say to yourself, I now want a data type that cannot only keep one string or one integer. This data type must keep a surname, a name, a student number, and an age. Obviously, there doesn't exist a data type like that, so you define your new data type, and, and we call it a class. So you declare or define class student, and you say it has three strings, and an integer and this is how you would define the class okay i told you earlier that an a class is something like a data type and an object is something like a variable so like in the first semester you would declare a variable x which is of data type int or variable amount which is of data type double you now declare an object and in this case the object's name is b and that is what the declaration would look like. Student B is assigned to new student. Okay, let's break up this declaration statement. The first part says student B. This introduces the concept of a pointer in programming. It simply says that B is a pointer and it will later on be pointing to a piece of memory that will keep information about a student. But at this stage, student B simply just declares the pointer B that could be pointing to something. In programming, the word new normally refers to reserving memory. So this part of the declaration new student simply says reserve memory in the computer to store information about one student and that information will be surname, name, student number and age. So B now points to a part of the memory that is reserved to keep that four variables regarding a student. The other words we use for this is we say B is an instance of the class student. These variables that you find inside an object are often referred to as attributes and they can also be to referred to as fields. So they're either attributes or fields. In this case, surname, name, student number and age are those attributes of the object. The issue is now how do we change those attributes? First of all, you can't simply say surname is assigned to Hreling like you would do with variables in the first semester. Uh, that would be incorrect. You need to indicate that it's surname inside object B. So therefore you say B.surname or B.name. Okay, so how do you re display the attributes of an object? First of all, you cannot say console write line B and then expect all the attributes to be displayed. That is an incorrect use of B. You can also not just say console write line surname and expect the, the surname of B to be displayed. Because somehow you need to know where surname comes from. So the correct way would be console write line B dot surname and console write line B dot name. 
In summary, what I've done now is I've declared two objects. The one is called B and the other one is F. They are both instances of class student. So they both have attributes surname, name, student number and age. Then I go ahead and I initialize surname and name for B. So notice B has Hreiling and John. And then I initialize age and student number for F. It is thus clear that you must indicate the name of the attribute as well as the object. For example, if you simply say name is assigned to Peter, the program wouldn't know whether you're referring to object B or object F, and therefore it would be an illegal statement. I just need, just need to make a quick side note on this uh, referencing of attributes inside a class like b.age and b.surname. Before you actually implement this, you would need to watch a future video on the scope of objects uh, and their attributes. Um, at this stage, this would not be legal but we need to introduce the concept of private and public attributes in a later video. Thank you.